Hey, CPA here, hope you're doing well. Hey, so great news, there's no cliff. So we know that the PPP Flexibility Act was signed into law on Friday and very promptly, um, just here hot off the press, the SBA came out with a press release that confirmed there is no cliff. And what are we talking about on that? So we know that in the Flexibility Act, it reduced the requirement to use 75% for payroll down to 60%. Um, and we now know with the Flexibility Act, we have up to 24 weeks to use the PPP funds for the qualified expenses. Side note, for owner employees and the self-employed, there is a specific breakout, not in the Flexibility Act, but out of the CARES Act, as well as then the amendments to the CARES Act. And then if you look to the PPP loan forgiveness application, there are special provisions special line item for owner employees and the self-employed. So I'll have in the body of this links to the videos where I talk about this, but as it relates to payroll for employees, the payroll costs, the rent, the utilities, mortgage interest, the qualified expenses, there's up to 24 weeks now to spend those dollars with now only the 60% requirement on the payroll. So hear me on the cliff. What I've put in my other videos stands correct, which is the SBA came out on April 3rd and indicated in the SBA guidelines that 75% shall be spent on payroll costs. The flexibility law that was signed uh, indicates that now 60% shall be used on payroll costs. Both included the same language. That's why I knew it was not a cliff. If you look at the PPP, application. I've got a number of videos on this that I put out in the last several days and you go to page three, line 10. There it indicates the requirement and it was 0.75, 75%. It will now be in the updated application yet to be released, will be 0.6, 60%. It's not a cliff and I am going to read directly from the press release that just came out from the SBA that says, lowers the requirements that 75% of the borrower's loan proceeds must be used for payroll costs and 75% of the loan forgiveness amount must be spent on payroll costs during the 24 week loan forgiveness covered period to 60% of each of those requirements. If a borrower uses less than 60% of the loan amount for payroll costs during the forgiveness covered period, the 24 weeks, the borrower will continue to be eligible for partial loan forgiveness subject to at least 60% of the loan forgiveness amount having been used for payroll costs. Very clearly, the SBA is indicating that what it had interpreted before is the same as now, except that it's 60%. The reason it's divisible, okay, is you have to look at the line item that it's taking a division of, okay? It's not taking the loan amount, it's taking the payroll costs. So when you go to line 10, page three, which I have many videos on this just in the last four days, four or five days, where I have a whiteboard up and I'm walking through the math, you take the payroll cost divided by 0.6. Okay, so if you were looking at the loan forgiveness amount, 60% of the loan forgiveness must be on payroll costs. It's not 60% of the loan, it's 60% of the loan forgiveness. So the reason it's divisible is to get you up to the number that it has to be to then qualify 60% of it is for payroll. Think of it this way, you get $100,000 as a PPP loan. Everybody's interpreting it as, well, if you don't spend 60,000 on payroll, none of it's gonna be forgiven. It's just absolutely false, okay? You got 100,000, okay? Boom, put it aside. You have a completely separate calculation to determine how much of that is forgiven, 
okay? So don't hear, don't hear me wrong. If you got a hundred grand and you spent at least 60 grand on payroll and you didn't get any other haircuts, well then you should be able to achieve forgiveness at least on the payroll cost that you got. But if you spent less than 60 grand, okay? Then you have to go, well, what's my loan forgiveness? Well, you have to look first and foremost at payroll cost, divide it by 0.6 to then go, well, here's the maximum that would be able to be forgiven. So I got my handy dandy uh, calculator here. So if you only spent 50,000 on payroll, okay? You didn't spend the 60, okay? And you go, well, how much of my loan is gonna be forgiven? Well, first of all, the 50,000, okay? Should be an amount that's forgiven, okay? So if you're now looking to go, but how much of my 100 can be forgiven because I spent 50 on payroll and I spent 50 on rent and utilities, as an example, okay? Because we now have 24 weeks. Well, what it's indicating though, is if I take 50,000 divided by 0.6, okay? then the max amount that can be forgiven would be $83,333. And go, well, why is it that amount? Because that amount times 0.6 is $50,000. So you're inversing it, okay? So I have a whiteboard here in a second. A couple other things to note here, we know about the safe harbors, okay? But just as a quick refresher, it's related to the FTEs. It is not related to salary reductions that may have occurred. It's talking about if you cannot get your numbers up for the full-time equivalent, then there are safe harbors there, which is you weren't able to get your business back up to the level of business that you were before. You were, or, and or, you were not able to replace those employees with similar qualified employees, okay? So we have some safe harbors there. We have now till December 31st to get those FTEs to where they need to be. The other main thing that might be different than what you all thought, and it was in the 11th hour, and I did mention it in a prior video, is that you still only have till June 30 to get the PPP loan. There was a minor confusion in some of the language that it might have been interpreted that you could get the PPP loan up through 12-31-2020 not the case and they verify. It says, in addition, the new rules, new rules confirm that June 30, 2020 remains the last date in which a PPP loan application can be approved. So you only have till then. Uh, and then as we're looking at um, the, uh, uh, the loans that can be paid out over five years, uh, it indicates here that those are going to be loans that were on or after June 5th. So if you got a loan on June 4th or before, it's still the two years. You get the PPP loan June 5th or after, so that would be based on approval. Um, then you get the five-year option. If it's less than, it's good, it, I mean, if it's before June 5th, then it's the two years. So here's the update. Here's a quick whiteboard um, calculation on this 0.6. So on the Flexibility Act, what this is affecting is line 10, page three of the forgiveness application. Now, for you to fully kind of digest it, you have to go to the application, okay? Because you gotta see the calculation on page three for you to really kind of have that aha moment. So you can go to my website, jjthecpahelp.com, and we'll put a link in there. And uh, I've got a forgiveness page. I've got a self-employed forgiveness page. I have an SBA, but you'll be able to find the application for forgiveness there. So really, if, if this still kind of, it's, it's easy to boggle you because I was boggled at first too, back originally, go to that page, okay? So it's now, it was 75%, now it's 60%. It's not all or nothing. It's not. The SBA came out and said, if it's less than 60%, it still can achieve loan forgiveness, okay? So it's not a cliff, okay? It's nothing new. So this does apply to all, including the self-employed, everyone, because this is the same calculation for everybody in the loan forgiveness application. So I had told you, let's say someone gets a $100,000 loan. 
but they only have 50,000 in payroll, okay? So we got 50,000 in payroll. You have to divide that by 0.6 to then achieve max forgiveness. So the max forgiveness for this individual would be $83,333. You think, well, that still doesn't make sense to me. Well, because this is only the payroll cost, okay? Everybody goes directly to, well, of the loan, 100,000 times 60% has to be the payroll cost. But you have to remember, we're now doing a loan forgiveness calculation, okay? So yeah, the loan's a hundred grand. So we do know that, well, if you look at the page three, we know that the loan forgiveness can't be more than a hundred grand. We also know that the loan forgiveness cannot include anything less than 60% for payroll. So if you take the 50,000 divided by 0.6, which is the same as 60%, then what you're determining is the maximum that can be forgiven is $83,333 because if you take that times 60%, it's $50,000, which then says, well, the reason that the max loan forgiveness is $83,333 is because that would include at least 60% of payroll costs. Does that make sense there? So you could have someone that spent 50,000 on payroll costs and they only spent 10,000 on rent, utilities, and interest. So they spent 60 grand, okay? Well, this just shows that, okay, well, the 60 grand would be forgivable if they have 50,000 in payroll and they have 10,000 in rent because this shows that the max forgiveness would be $83,333. All right, hey, I'm gonna have another video called why divided, okay? Why divided on the PPP forgiveness? But here's your update. And there's a couple of key things that I'm glad that we were able to get out to you. So thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe and then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. All right, hey, have a great day.